I didn't think it would hit me that hard, but oh. I'm so hungry. Oh shit, I don't know what to do. I can't believe that I was so stupid. This is so hard. Oh, this is incredible. <laughs> really long day I'm so exhausted I almost cried I couldn't be happier I hate it today I'm in quite a bit of pain now we've made it <laughs> it's so hard I'm just in a great mood I'm feeling so lonely oh, oh I hate this one of those moments where I think yes this is it Sometimes we just live our daily life, not even realizing that we need something else. On the surface, everything seems fine. After all, we're doing the same thing as everyone around us. We are following society's expectations, thinking that we need to have a great career, spend money, buy a home and settle down in order to have a fulfilled life. But is this the right path for everyone? Is it the only way to happiness? A one-size-fits-all? Hi, this is me. I'm Ellie, standing at Dunnett Head, the northernmost point of mainland Britain. I'm about to start my biggest adventure, hiking the length of the UK, 2,600 kilometers from north to south. For a long time, I've had the feeling that something in my life wasn't quite right. On paper, my life was great and I should have been happy. So what was wrong with me? Friends around me built their life and had things figured out. But I was getting more and more confused, feeling that I didn't really fit in and didn't meet the expectations. I needed something else, to go out on an adventure, taking life into my own hands instead of following the well-trodden path that didn't feel like my own. And that's exactly what I did. Yeah, I would be lying if I said I wasn't scared. Like, yeah, if you realize that you won't be home for several weeks and months. When I set off to walk the length of Britain, I left behind my old life, my career and a stable income. I had quit my job, sold a lot of my belongings and said goodbye to friends and family. I took with me my entire life stuffed into my backpack. The essentials weighing just under 9 kilograms. And my best friend and perfect hiking companion, my rescue dog Otto. But inevitably, I also took with me my anxiety and self-doubts. Was it all a mistake? Was it too big of a project? Would I come back having failed? Now it's getting real. I'm I'm really anxious. I'm a bit scared, to be honest. But there was no turning back. I wanted to do it, facing my fears and trying to find my way. I didn't know it yet, but lying ahead of me were well over 100 nights in my tent, the most beautiful landscapes, a lot of pot noodles and countless cups of coffee, and a journey to a more fulfilled life. Even the longest hike starts with the very first step. Let's go! After months of planning, Otto and I started walking in the north of Scotland. The trail took us across vast areas of peat box, along remote lochs and to our first bothy. The start was rough. There are so many ticks like everywhere. I've, I think I have never seen so many ticks in one place. We hiked in freezing temperatures and icy winds, oftentimes without seeing anyone for days. I went a week without a shower and lived on dehydrated food and strictly rationed energy bars. Today is also the day I'm gonna 
uh, come across the first shop in 12 days. I can't believe it. There was almost no infrastructure and sometimes not even a path. There's no clear path. I just have to, yeah, like follow a line on my phone. River crossings, bogs and wet feet were our constant companion. It's really, really wet. Oh. Oh. But the landscape was stunning. The beauty of the highlands really distracted me from the hard moments. As the days got longer and spring arrived, we joined the West Highland Way and it felt amazing to be on an established trail. And we are on the West Highland Way and I couldn't be happier. It's so beautiful and I already know what's ahead. The landscape that we are hiking through. We had finally gotten into our rhythm when I had to face my first big setback. My foot pain is getting worse and worse. I got plantar fasciitis and could barely walk anymore. I was in the middle of nowhere, stranded on a campsite. If it doesn't get better, I, I will have to stop and yeah, go back home. And, yeah, I'm a bit devastated and I'm I felt so lonely and was in a lot of pain. I came very close to quitting, but was too stubborn to give up. And for the first time ever, I realized that being able to walk is such a huge privilege, not ever to be taken for granted. This experience made me humble and was one of the biggest learnings for me. I worked on my recovery and tried everything to heal my foot. After almost two weeks of rest and many tears, I could finally hike on, feeling more grateful than ever before. Today is the first day in over two weeks that I don't have any foot pain at all. It disappeared, it's like a miracle. With new shoes and new energy, Otto and I left the highlands behind. The last day, or actually the last mile, on the West Highland Way and yeah, it feels bittersweet to be honest. We jumped on the John Muir Way and headed east. After a little detour to Edinburgh, we continued across the lowlands. I really enjoy the landscape. I um, didn't have specific picture in mind but I'm I, but I'm so surprised it's really really beautiful we had great weather and amazing wild camp spots Hiking all day, every day, was physically challenging. It's really hard going today. Uh. Why do we keep going day after day? Well, because life on trail is also kind of simple. You leave your normal life behind and with it responsibilities and worries. You live in the present, immersed in nature, only focused on your basic needs. It's hard but also feels natural and direct. You follow the never-changing rhythm of walking, eating and sleeping. The day not being defined by screen time and deadlines, but only by sunrise and sunset. By going without the comforts of civilization, you learn to value the most simple things and realize how little you actually need to be happy. It's our last full day of hiking in Scotland. After seven weeks and 900 kilometers, we reached the border to England and started the Pennine Way. 
Running along the so-called backbone of England, we followed it all the way south to the Midlands. We walked over high peaks and into picturesque dales. We're gonna go up and over Crossfell, which is the highest point of our hike. Seeing iconic places like High Cup Nick, the beautiful Teesdale and Mellum Cove was spectacular. But the Pennines were also ruthless. I think I'm a bit nervous for the first, I think, a little over 30 kilometers. There is no water. We hiked in a heat wave over exposed terrain, which definitely made things harder. We started early again, it's only half six, but I can already feel that it's going to be another very warm day. The seemingly endless moorland sometimes got a bit monotonous and it felt like we weren't making progress. The trail was a lot more challenging than expected and by the end I struggled and was exhausted. I really just only want to arrive at our spot. Oh, it's really tough today. But we made it and finally reached the southern terminus in Edale. I'm here. I've made it. Oh my god. As we headed west and left the peak district behind, the landscape changed drastically. We now hiked through the suburbs of Greater Manchester, along railway lines and motorways, and on overgrown footpaths. We crossed into Wales and followed the coastline, walking along warehouses, scrapyards and busy roads. These days weren't the most scenic, but it was all part of the hike. Still road walking, stuck between the road, and the railway, and that's the sea over there, but not for us at the moment. With Offa's dike path, we jumped onto another national trail and followed it along the Wales-England border. The trail blew me away. The path just runs along there. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, this looks so incredible. It was just gorgeous and there was so much variation. It had a bit of everything, from castles to woodlands, meadows to moorland, and mountain ranges to little villages with old churches. But the trail also was as tough as it was scenic. I'm a little afraid that there's going to be lightning. After weeks of dry weather, we were now getting all the rain at once accompanied by heavy thunderstorms, resulting in some very hard days. I've never been this wet on the entire hike. Maybe my entire life, I don't know. But we pushed on. The weather finally improved and we finished the trail in Shepstow. We walked over the Severn Bridge and were back in England. Otto and I reached Bristol after one of the worst days on the trail. I've been walking along this road for over a mile. I'm so exhausted from carrying Otto. It's closed. Oh, I don't know what to do. Exhausted and ready for another rest. The saying the trail provides really proved to be true, oftentimes in form of meeting people at the exact right time. When I didn't find a camp spot, Andrew invited me to pitch the tent in his garden. When I felt lonely, I met Rachel and we became friends after only one evening together in a pub. Apparently he saw him and he, <laughs> he went to the pet store and bought this and once I got out he just brought me that and gave it to me and told me to give it to Otto. Dan let me stay in his flat when I needed a rest. Alex sent me resupply parcels. Graham and Carol invited us to stay with them, cooked me dinner and washed my clothes. 
The trail really restored my faith in humanity. When you're out hiking, you're somewhat exposed and might end up needing some sort of help. And that's in these moments that you will experience the kindness of strangers. It becomes apparent if we allow ourselves to depend on it. Most people are inherently good, even though we tend to think otherwise, influenced by news and social media. They were so nice and he was so yeah encouraging and the next morning before I left he just came over and handed me 10 pounds and said I should go get a coffee and a treat for Otto. It wasn't just the landscape that made hiking the length of Britain so special. The people I was lucky to meet along the way made all the difference. After a good rest and exploring Bristol, we hiked on across Somerset. The trail was demoralizing with fields with nosy cows and very overgrown paths. Shit, I hate this. Oh, that's so hard. But we were rewarded by historic highlights like the Roman town of Bath and the medieval streets and wells. We hiked over the Quantock Hills and reached Minehead, the start of the southwest coast path. Such a great feeling and yeah, I couldn't be happier right now to be back on the coast and ah, oh, this is this is incredible. I'm so so happy right now. Getting to this milestone was so special and it felt like coming full circle. Otto and I had hiked the coast path one year earlier and it had changed so much for me. It was the coast path that led to me quitting my job, realizing that I needed something else. Yeah, it made me change my outlook on life and yeah, what I wanted. Um, so yeah, it, it became really special and I'm so happy to be back here. Words can't describe how happy I was that we had made it all the way from Scotland to now hike the coast path as the grand finale. And it was epic. Hiking along the coast to the sound of the waves crashing, looking out to the sea all day was so good for my mind and soul. I was soaking it all in, knowing that our hike would eventually come to an end. There are a lot of seals on these rocks there. Ah, oh, I'm so happy. Even though the terrain was tough, we covered more elevation than on any other part before, I didn't even realize it being so distracted by the beauty of the coastline. It's hard work, but it's so worth it for views like this. We walked through the almost rainforest-like woodlands of Exmoor and climbed high cliffs on exposed paths. We hiked in an amber wind warning and negotiated endless flights of steps. One of the most notorious bits, because I think it's over 230 steps going from down there all the way up. The path took us along beautiful beaches with almost white sand and to hidden coves with the perfect turquoise water. We camped on cliff tops and enjoyed the sun setting over the sea. Long distance hiking for me is best described as being a roller coaster. It makes me so happy. I'm so proud. I'm not feeling great. Uh, uh, okay, wow, that's way too deep. I'm so excited. I'm really tired. It's incredible. This is officially the wettest day. This day was a bit shit. I'm very, very grateful that I'm still hiking. I'm so happy. <laughs> you go through all the emotions sometimes in one day. The time on trail is just intense, packed with new experiences and meeting new people, the beauty of nature, being exposed to all kinds of weather and thrown back on your thoughts, fears and expectations, all at the same time. Just as we were slowly nearing the end, the trail threw me one last curveball. The nail of my finger just literally came off and... Oh, fuck. 
I smashed my finger in a door, had to go to the hospital and get stitches. Everything went so well and now listen, I'm so annoyed and angry at myself and also it really hurts. I didn't know whether I would manage to hike on with a pretty substantial wound. But I didn't want to quit so close to the end either. And so, with my finger wrapped up, we set off again to complete our last week on the trail. We got to the remote and wild westernmost part of England and reached Land's End, the typical finishing point of a through hike across the UK. But this wasn't the end of our hike and we still had a few more days to go. Hiking the length of Britain was the hardest thing I've ever done. The trail demanded everything from us. We hiked through the freezing cold, torrential rain and hail, through scorching sun, wind and lightning. I felt miserable and lonely, doubting myself. I was in pain and hungry, desperate and anxious and worried about Otto. But the hike also gave me everything in return and taught me so much. I am strong, I am resilient, I can push through the tough moments and cope with being alone. I can overcome my fears and insecurities. I know what I'm good at and I'm more self-confident. I learned not to overthink everything and adapt to new situations. I learned to trust the process and to believe that everything will be okay in the end. I found happiness and freedom. I met peace and grateful for my body that carried me all the way. I'm so proud of myself and even more of Otto. Having a dog to share your life with is such a privilege. And I liked the thought that this little dog that was shot as a puppy and lived in a cage in a shelter for the first years of his life now gets to explore new areas and walked hundreds of kilometers on his tiny legs, enjoying many packets of crisps and living his best life. If the hike did one thing, it was strengthening the bond that Otto and I have. I'm so grateful that we got to explore all these beautiful places and spend all day, every day together. And then it was there, the day that I'd been treading and was looking forward to at the same time. This is it, the last day. It's, oh, it's so crazy. We were approaching Lizard Point, the southernmost point of mainland Britain and the end of an incredible adventure that had been everything I'd hoped for and so much more. After 117 days of hiking, Otto and I took the very last steps and finished our hike. <laughs> we're done, we're finished, we've made it. <laughs> the feeling of reaching the end was indescribable. I felt accomplished and proud but also exhausted and overwhelmed. Grateful for everything that happened and anxious about what would come afterwards. Happy to have completed, but sad to have finished. When I set off many weeks prior, I was looking for something else. Did I find it on the trail? Well, I still haven't everything figured out and I still don't know exactly where I'll fit in. But the trail made me realize that I'm okay. It's okay to not have the answer to everything. It's okay to not meet society's expectations. I can create my own path. We only have that one life and it's way too short to worry about what other people might think instead of choosing what makes us happy. I don't know what the future holds, but for now, I think I just want to keep hiking.